If unsure about which extinguisher to use, especially on hazardous materials fire, what should you do? A. Use water. B. Use any available fire extinguisher. C. Wait for firefighters. D. Use a blanket. Answer. C. Wait for firefighters. If a qualified person is already helping the injured at the accident scene, what should you do? A. Leave the scene. B. Immediately join in and help. C. Stay out of the way unless asked to assist. D. Call more people to help. Answer. C. Stay out of the way unless asked to assist. In a front wheel skid, what does the front end tend to do? A. Turn sharply to the right. B. Turn sharply to the left. C. Go in a straight line regardless of steering. D. Completely lose traction and lift off the ground. Answer. C. Go in a straight line regardless of steering. Which of the following is not true about ABS? A. ABS will prevent power or turning skids. B. ABS won't necessarily shorten stopping distance. C. ABS is an add-on to your normal brakes. D. ABS won't compensate for poor brake maintenance. Answer. A. ABS will prevent power or turning skids. If the steering feels heavy, it is most likely due to A. Low engine power B. A failure in one of the front tires C. Bad road conditions D. Malfunctioning steering wheel Answer. B. A failure in one of the front tires What does the term fishtail refer to? A. The vehicle making fish-like sounds B. The back of the vehicle sliding back and forth. C. A type of driving technique on wet roads. D. A vehicle design resembling a fish's tail. Answer. B. The back of the vehicle sliding back and forth. What should you do with the steering wheel if a front tire fails? A. Let go of the steering wheel. B. Turn the steering wheel in the opposite direction of the skid. C. Hold the steering wheel firmly with both hands. D. Only use one hand to stabilize the steering wheel. Answer. C. Hold the steering wheel firmly with both hands. If you experience brake failure while going downhill, what should you do? A. Continue downhill and hope for the best. B. Look for a side road that turns uphill. C. Accelerate to reach the bottom quickly. D. Pump the gas pedal. Answer. B. Look for a side road that turns uphill. What is the primary purpose of an escape ramp? A. To act as a shortcut. B. To resist the motion of the vehicle and bring it to a stop. C. To allow vehicles to accelerate downhill. D. To provide a viewpoint for scenic vistas. Answer. B. To resist the motion of the vehicle and bring it to a stop. What is the purpose of downshifting when experiencing brake failure? A. To adjust brake pressure. B. To generate hydraulic pressure. C. To help slow the vehicle. D. To balance the vehicle. Answer. C. To help slow the vehicle. In the stab braking method, how long can it take for the wheels to start rolling after you release the brakes? A. Half a second. B. One second. C. Two seconds. D. Instantaneously. Answer. B. One second. In an emergency, when you don't have enough room to stop. A. You should always brake hard. B. You should swerve without looking. C. Steering away from the obstacle may be the safest option. D. You should immediately turn off the engine. Answer. C. Steering away from the obstacle may be the safest option. Why is it important to keep both hands on the steering wheel during an emergency? A. 
to operate other controls in the vehicle. B. To turn quickly and maintain control. C. To signal other drivers using hand signals. D. To adjust the vehicle's mirrors. Answer B. To turn quickly and maintain control. If your safe speed is 40 miles per hour, at what speed should you start applying the brakes on a downgrade? A. 45 miles per hour. B. 50 miles per hour. C. 35 miles per hour. D. 40 miles per hour. Answer D. 40 miles per hour. How should you approach yard areas and grade crossings in cities and towns? A. Rush through them. B. With as much caution as rural grade crossings. C. Ignore them as they are safe. D. Only at night. Answer B. With as much caution as rural grade crossings. When is a full stop required at grade crossings? A. Only during the night. B. When there's no train in sight. C. When the cargo mandates it or when required by law. D. At every grade crossing, always. Answer C. When the cargo mandates it or when required by law. How long does it typically take for a tractor trailer unit to clear a single track? A. 5 seconds. B. 10 seconds. C. 14 seconds. D. 20 seconds. Answer C. 14 seconds. What vehicles are required to stop as indicated by the advance warning sign? A. Only passenger vehicles. B. Only hazmat carrying vehicles. C. Both passenger and hazmat carrying vehicles. D. All vehicles regardless of type. Answer. C. Both passenger and hazmat carrying vehicles. What does the pavement marking at a railroad crossing typically consist of? A. An X with the letters RR. B. A series of arrows. C. Parallel white lines. D. Zigzag patterns. Answer. A. An X with the letters RR. If there is no white stop line at the crossbuck signs, how far from the rails should vehicles stop? A. Exactly 10 feet. B. Between 15 to 50 feet. C. More than 100 feet. D. At least 5 feet. Answer. B. Between 15 to 50 feet. What are passive crossings? A. Crossings with flashing red lights. B. Crossings without any traffic control device. C. Crossings with bells and gates. D. Crossings located near residential areas. Answer. B. Crossings without any traffic control device. Which of the following is not an active device at active crossings? A. Bells. B. Flashing red lights. C. Stop signs. D. Gates. Answer. C. Stop signs. How often should you inspect the tires when driving in very hot weather? A. Every 50 miles. B. Every 100 miles. C. Every 2 hours. D. Both B and C. Answer. D. Both B and C. Antifreeze in the engine cooling system is beneficial for A. Only cold conditions. B. Only hot conditions. C. Both hot and cold conditions. D. Aesthetic purposes. Answer. C. Both hot and cold conditions. Why should you step back after turning the radiator cap to the first stop? A. To get a better view of the coolant level. B. To release pressure from the cooling system safely. C. To avoid getting wet from the coolant. D. It is not necessary to step back. Answer. B. To release pressure from the cooling system safely. 
When should you drive on very slippery roads? A. As fast as possible to minimize time on the road. B. At a moderate speed to maintain control. C. Very slowly and smoothly. D. You shouldn't drive at all. Answer. D. You shouldn't drive at all. Why is seeing taillights or headlights in front of you in a fog not always a good indication of the road's direction? A. Because the lights might belong to a parked vehicle. B. Because it's a signal for help. C. Because the lights are misleading. D. The vehicle might not be on the road at all. Answer. D. The vehicle might not be on the road at all. When should you dim your headlights? A. When within 500 feet of an approaching vehicle. B. Only when the oncoming vehicle dims theirs. C. At all times. D. Only when driving in urban areas. Answer. A. When within 500 feet of an approaching vehicle. How far can you see with low beam headlights at night? A. 150 feet. B. 250 feet. C. 350 feet. D. 500 feet. Answer. B. 250 feet. What is the primary recommended action when feeling drowsy while driving? A. Continue driving and turn up the radio. B. Drink a cup of coffee. C. Open the window for fresh air. D. Get off the road and get some sleep. Answer, D. Get off the road and get some sleep. Which of the following is not a warning sign of fatigue? A. Yawning repeatedly. B. Listening to music. C. Missing exits or traffic signs. D. Feeling restless and irritable. Answer, B. Listening to music. Which group of people is not identified as being at an increased risk for fall asleep crashes? A. Elderly women. B. Shift workers. C. Young males. D. Long haul drivers. Answer A. Elderly women. How much sleep did long haul truck drivers average per day according to the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration study in 1996? A. Less than 4 hours. B. Less than 5 hours. C. About 6 hours. D. More than 7 hours. Answer. B. Less than 5 hours. Which of the following should you not do when confronted by an aggressive driver? A. Report the driver to the police. B. Make eye contact. C. Get out of their way. D. Refuse to react to gestures. Answer. B. Make eye contact. If an aggressive driver crashes down the road, what should you do? A. Leave immediately. B. Approach the driver and confront them. C. Stop at a safe distance and wait for the police. D. Take photos for evidence. Answer, C. Stop at a safe distance and wait for the police.